Um, can we talk about the fear starting? Yeah, let's talk about it. Um, do you want to start out or you want me to start out, Latoya? You want me to dive in? So sorry. Um, I've been with you for a while, Dee, and you know how much I love and respect you, but I had to do an inventory on myself. And this is really hard to admit. I have all the tools, the resources, and right now I have the money to do this. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on it. I write down everything I need to do and move forward, and I'm scared. Mm -hmm. um, I can't continue to work for the company I'm working for. Mm -hmm. because I've been so abused and most of us are and I'm an HR manager so I'm not talking like some employee doesn't know employment law or how to protect themselves but we're so trained we're so trained to work for other people and also oftentimes be in, in positions or in jobs that are, are making millions off of you not hundreds of thousands and I don't know how to move past this fear and I go to counseling I go tomorrow but I just need you to tell me so and I'm sorry to cry because you don't see me cry through anything you know that but I'm just so hurt and so tired no you know, and I don't know what to do Latoya first of all your tears are welcome here right this is a safe space for you so we're there are many people who are afraid to say that they're afraid so you having the courage to stand up and to say i'm afraid is a big deal so you do not have to apologize for showing your emotions you do not have to apologize for crying it is a very normal feeling so let's just start there and then i just want to say congratulations for having the heart to acknowledge that because again there are many people that are watching and are watching the replay and they're like dang I'm so glad she said it because this is exactly how I feel and I didn't know how to say it. So I just really appreciate your authenticity in that and your vulnerability and, and coming forward. But let's talk about it because there are levels of fear. There's fear of success. There's fear of failure. There's fear of change, right? There are, are, are those are the three main areas of fear. Your fear of rejection. So that's four. Right? So we have, oh, I'm gonna write those down. So we can really, 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 really live off of that, right? So you've got fear of rejection. You've got fear of change, right? You've got fear of failure. And what was the other one I said? Fear of failure, fear of change, fear of rejection. I said one more, who was listening to? I did four. Change, rejection, failure, and it was one more. I'm sure somebody over there listen. Success. That's exactly right. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that. And fear of success. So let's go through all of them. Uh, first, fear of success is so normal. And um, it, it is, it can hold you back. It really can hold you back. But the idea of, of being successful I, you know, even though you may have a fear, it, it may be a fear. And this is for everyone. I'm going to go through all four. Okay. So even though there may be a fear, um, that fear, I, I challenge you to turn that fear into anxiety or into something a little bit more positive because everything that you are looking to accomplish and achieve comes with the work that you're doing now. The success that you have coming for you is what God has put in your path for you is what you've been thinking about is what you've been dreaming about. And it's probably way bigger than you could possibly even imagine. And that's what makes it kind of scary. Like I'm here, I'm actually doing it. It's actually coming to life. I can't believe it. Like I get that, but I want you to know that, that you would not be here if it wasn't meant for you to be here. Like if, if God, the universe, whoever didn't feel like you could handle this task, you would not be in this position. And I just want you to let that sink in. Not everybody has the ability to run a business. So if God put it in your heart, your mind, and your soul, gave you the resources, the tools, the money, everything to be successful, he would not put anything that you can't handle. So this success is for you. You understand what I'm saying? And you gotta embrace that and know that and believe in yourself. And I wanna just give you some tools 
to help you. Like, I know y'all might think I'm crazy, but I have stuff all over my walls. I show y'all all the time. My house is beautiful. If I show you, well, maybe it's messy. <laughs> I got washed clothes all on the table. My house is gorgeous. I, I got a nice sunset. I got a beautiful view here in LA. But on my walls, in my bathroom, in my bedroom, are my dreams, are my visions, are my ideas, are my goals. And I live by those things. I write them down. I, I meditate on them. I work out on them, right? You've got to do the work in order to be ready to succeed, be able to receive the success that God has waiting for you. So fear of success is normal, it's okay, but just know that like everything's gonna be okay. And the work that you're doing now is not just for you, but it's for somebody else. It's for the people that you're supporting. It's for the people who are gonna receive the energy of you. You have work to do, okay? And that's, that's for all parts of that fear. Now let's talk about fear of um, change, okay? So I, I, what I hear is, you know, I'm, I'm, I have this, this pattern of working for someone else and this is what I know and what I know best. However, it doesn't feel good because for whatever the reason is, you don't like the way you're being treated. You're not being paid enough. You, you feel like you're worth more, whatever the case may be. Now it's time for you to move into your own, to step out into your own. That is the scariest thing on the planet. That's scarier than anything, in my opinion, on the planet, because you can't see what's coming ahead of you. You don't know what's coming ahead of you, right? You can't physically say, I know that this is gonna happen, or at least that's what your mind is telling you. But I've got to tell you that, you know, somebody told, I, I read somewhere that change is the only thing that's constant. And I, 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 I didn't know if I agreed with that. I don't know if it's the only thing that's constant, but I will say the change is happening all the time. And this version of you right now, let's, let's step back. The version of you who goes to work every day is not the same version of you who's running this business. And I think that's where it gets a little dicey for people, that they're coming out of one version of themselves trying to take that version of themselves into the new version. The new version is rejecting that. The new version is saying, uh-uh, that's not what this is about. The old version is coming in fearful because the old version would be fearful because the old version has everything to lose. The new version, not the same. The new version is moving in faith, period. The new version is a risk taker, period. The new version knows without a shadow of a doubt that this thing is gonna work, period. The new version steadfast in, this is gonna work. I'm gonna sell the crap out of this. I'm gonna help so many people. I'm gonna build me a team. Like the new version is as a matter of fact with no type of security blanket in front of them. They have zero security blankets. Do you understand what I'm saying? Everything is is all they have is a vision in their mind, the end goal. That's it. Everything from the vision to where they are now, blank. They're going, they're moving in faith. Two different people. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Just keep it real with you more than I can ever keep it real with you. The version of you who's working for someone else is not the same version of you that can run this business. They are two totally different people. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, think of yourself five years ago. Think about the energy that you set in, in your body, in yourself, who you were, who you showed up as five years ago. And tell me, are you showing up as that person today? Number, put a one in the box if you are, put a two in the box if you're not. Let's just keep it real. Let's, let's put all the cards on the table. If you're still the same person you were five years ago, now it's time for change. Now it's time for change. You can't be the same person. Your body changes every seven years. Your body redevelops itself every seven. There's no way you can be the same person you were five years ago you are today. You've learned too much over the past five years. You've experienced too many things over the past five years. You've met too many people over the past five years. You cannot possibly on this planet be the same person you were five years ago. You might be doing the same things, as far as work, 
but you can't be the same person that you were because you're experiencing too many things on a daily basis. You're learning too many things on a daily basis. Okay. So with that being said, understand that that version of you, you've got to break up with, or you've got to figure out how to put that version of you in a compartment. If you're still working your day job, you have to compartmentalize that version of you. She's that person to them while you're there. Do you understand? But here, this version of me, she's all fake. And I gotta just tell y'all right now, I don't go to church. I'm gonna just tell you, I don't go to church. I do not go to church. I do not go to church. I grew up in a cult. I am anti-church. But I'm telling you what I know to be factual. I'm telling you that faith is not a church thing. It's not a religion thing. It's an energy. It's an energy. And the energy of faith is scary because you don't have any real definition of what's about to happen that you can put your finger on. But the energy of faith is knowing, knowing that everything is going to work out exactly in your favor or better. So this version of you has to try things. This version of you has to watch your ears. If you're sensitive to cursing, you got to fuck up. You got to make mistakes. You got to fail. <laughs> and it's going to hurt. Y'all see what I've been going through? Y'all watching me the last 30 days. My business is going all over the place. But that doesn't stop me from moving forward. That doesn't stop me from going forward. I'm scared as hell. I'm scared. Y'all think I'm not scared because I'm your coach. You think I'm not afraid of things. I'm afraid of everything. I'm afraid when I have to get up and talk to you all. But my faith, my knowing and what I'm here to do, my purpose. I know y'all, each and every one of you have a why. Each and every one of you has a purpose. Every one of you are here because something in your heart, mind, soul, God, universe, whatever said, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Get on it. And you follow through. Some with a little push from D. Williams, <laughs> but you follow through. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now it's about you looking in the mirror. This is not for just for Latoya. This is for everyone. This is about you looking in the mirror and defining who you really are. Because if you're the person who is working for someone, if that's the version of you of who you really are, then this business might not be for you. If you can't flip into the next version of you, this business may not be for you. Let's talk about that one more. Let's break that down a little bit more. I use this as an example quite often because it feels so real to me. Like, um, I don't know if any of you all have children or you have a loved one, someone that you love a lot and you would give your life for. I've got three people at least. Those are my three children. Maybe my mama, we'll see. <laughs> See, I, see if she get on my nerves today, but at least my three kids, right? Um, that I would do that for. What would happen? Like this version of you, let's just say you in your car, you driving, this the version of you just driving, doing your regular everyday thing, okay? And God forbid this doesn't happen. I hope this doesn't happen. But let's say you get into a car accident and the person on the passenger side is your loved one and they get thrown out the car. And once they get thrown out the car, another car comes on top of them. Now you've watched your loved one get thrown out the car, they're on the ground, and you see another car laying on top of them. But you can visibly see that your loved one is still alive. What are you gonna do? What do you do? What's, what's your response to that? Who are you in that moment? And you don't have to answer that out loud. You can just answer that for yourself. But who are you in that moment? Because if that was my little girl, the version that was me riding down the road, she's one version. But the moment I see my baby under that car, I'm gonna go lift that car up. There you go. I'm going to do everything in my power. I'm gonna find strength that I didn't even know that I had. I'm gonna lift that car, I'm gonna be screaming, I'm gonna be looking for people to help me, but I'm gonna tell you the muscles that's gonna come from my body is gonna be a totally different version of myself. Are you kidding me? I'm about to pick up this daggone car. 
I'm about to pick this car up. I don't care how many thousands of pounds. <laughs> totally different version of D. Williams. Like, that's how you got to be about your business. And I know that seemed kind of extreme, but it genuinely is how you got to be about that business. How you got to embrace this new version of yourself. It is a different energy. And it is a higher energy. It's higher energy. It's got power. Because it's got it's to gotta be so much energy, this other version of yourself that is pushing you forward through your fear. It's got to push you through your fear. So you've got to think about who am I as an owner, as a boss? Who am I running a multi-billion dollar company? If my business is planning on being 10 million next year, who am I? You're going to have to fire. You're going to have to hire. You're going to have to sell. You're going to have to pay bills. You're going to have to deal with the IRS. You're going to have to deal with the Department of Labor. You're going to have to deal with nasty clients. You're going to have to deal with refunds. You're going to have to deal with people being impatient. You're going to have to deal with people's nasty personalities. You're going to have to deal with staying up late. You're going to have to deal with coming in early. You're going to have to deal with people lying to you. you got to deal with people stealing from you. You're going to deal with the bank stealing from you. You're going to deal with PayPal strike locking your account. You're going to deal with a whole bunch of shit. The part of you that's going to work every day can't handle that. That part, break down, cry, bullet in your head. But the version of you who says, I stand firm on this. I know who I am. I know what I can do. I know what I'm here to do. That version of you, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. What you got? That's it, bring it on. Because I'm here to stay. I'm here to impact lives. I'm here to do what I'm what I'm supposed to do. I'm gonna achieve every last one of my dreams and every last one of my goals. And that's what's gonna happen. And I'm gonna do this by any means necessary, ethically. I'm gonna go out trying, at least. That is a different version of yourself. But I really wanna dive into this because it is a different energy. It is a different energy. It is a different energy. Business is hard. If you're an employee, it's a flip. It's a flip. And think about all the entertainers, like Stephen um, Walker. He's one of our staff entrepreneurs. He was a butcher and, you know, helped helped him change his life. He'll tell you every day. But, you know, he said to me that recently, he's like, D, like there are people out there who own businesses and still work jobs. And I, thought, I was like, who, who, who's doing that? Who's doing that, Stephen? He's like, Jay-Z, Cat Williams. Like, and I said, well, why would you say that? He's like, they are. Jay-Z owns Rockefeller, and then he was the president of Def Jam. So here he was a boss, but he had to flip that off and become an employee to catch a paycheck. Cat Williams always does his own things, but he partnered with Netflix, right? So it's a different, it's two different versions. You've got a rules for being an employee, and there are rules for running your business and being an employer. That that change is okay. Now, failure. Honey, we better pray we fail. That's the thing. We better pray that there's some level of failure in your business. You better pray that there's some level of failure in your business. You better pray that there's some level of failure in your business. Because if it's not, you're never going to be able to fix things. Because if it's not, you're never going to be able to see what's broken. You understand what I'm saying? Failure is imperative. Now, let me tell you. Let me sit down for this. Listen, y'all. Failure hurts. <laughs> it hurts it hurts the ego it hurts your pride it hurts everywhere but it also makes you stronger and it makes you smarter and it makes you better everyone today is weak i said it they're weak because they're not experiencing things they're sheltering themselves running from things I have had the worst life a person could possibly have, which is why I'm pretty strong and resilient because things keep happening to me. I can stand up and say the things that I say and be confident and strong in who I am because of my experiences, because I fail. I'm not perfect. I fail. I screw up, but I get up every time. I get up every time and I try again. I get up and try. I get up and try. I get up and try. And I succeed most of the time because I'm relentless at what I do. But every now and then, I fail. And then I've got to come back and I've got to show face. I fail. I screwed up. Like, I'm sorry. I'm going to do whatever I can to fix it. Sometimes I'm beating myself up. <laughs> but 
I understand that at the end of the day, if I don't fail, I can't get better. I can't even be a great coach to you all if I don't fail. How are you going to support people in, in the way that we need to support them from a hiring perspective? How can you encourage them or motivate them if your whole life has been guns and uh, just ro roses, flowers and roses with no, no challenges? How can you even relate to someone, be empathetic to them? You are going there. There's no guarantee that you're going to fail. There's no guarantee that you're going to win. You're the only person that gets to find that. I will never fully fail. I might lose the battle, but I ain't never won the war. The war's still on. I'm still winning. I'm still on front street. I might have lost a couple of battles along the way, but I didn't lose the war. And that's what I feel like losses are, failures are. They're little battle, battles, you know? But it's not the war. The war is life. The war is moving towards your goal and, and, and doing what you actually say you're going to do. And as long as you're moving towards that and you're constantly, you know, pushing towards that goal, you're going to have way more wins than you are failures. You're going to have way more wins than you will have failures. So understand that when the failure comes, when, when you mess up, go through your emotions as the boss that you are. But no, like you got to stop and sit back and say, I'm thankful for this. If this didn't happen, then I would not know. And that's a sign of maturity. That's a sign of being an entrepreneur. That's a sign of being a real leader. Okay. It's a very, very important. You got to, you got to lose a battle or two. I'm a big anime junkie. My favorite anime on the planet is One Piece. The reason it's my favorite anime on the planet is because Luffy goes into these arcs and he fights but he doesn't win every battle and in most cartoons or anime the good guy wins every battle but Luffy didn't win every he doesn't win every battle as a matter of fact sometimes he's beaten to a pulp on his deathbed but every every time some blessing comes around the corner and then he goes and he sees his mistake he learns he goes back and he trains and then he goes and he does it again and he wins and now he's moving closer to obtaining the One Piece. Anybody who doesn't watch anime, you don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all should check the live action out on Netflix. You'll love it. But that's why it's one of my favorite anime. It's a real depiction of life. You're going to win some. You're going to lose some. But you got to put that bag on and you got to keep pushing forward. It's very important. Last one is rejection. You're going to get rejected. Just you're going to get rejected. But in, in, in staffing, rejection is very different than in dating. In dating, if you get rejected, no means no, period. In staffing, talking to the employer and the candidate, no don't really mean no, ever. Not ever, 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 ever. No does not mean no. No means not right now. No means I don't know enough about you. No means I don't know you yet. No means, hmm. But it doesn't mean no. It means I'm not ready for you right now. You've got to find other ways to capture my attention. It might mean that with dating too. I mean, if, if the guy is fly enough, I guess. But you're going to have rejection. And, and, you know, when I teach sales classes for rookies, you know, one of the big things that we do is celebrate the rejections. Every time someone says no, we celebrate. Oh. Why would you celebrate the no? Because you're one step closer to a yes. If it takes 12 to 24 times, then now, now it's only going to take 11 to 23 times because I done already got one out the way. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. Like this is a business is a, it's a, it's a, it's a rhythm and, and it's a timing and, and you know what I'm saying? I, I just want you to understand that when you get rejected, you create opportunity for you to find more ways to connect with your client and candidate in a better way. Because if they're saying no, they're saying no to what? No what? Okay. And once you hear the what, now you can go and counter that. Now you can start creating things, especially if you hear it more than once. No is a strategic opportunity for you to expand your business as an entrepreneur. I love it when people tell me no. 
because now I'm trying to find 80, different, 80 million different ways to show them my value. Because at the end of the day, I know for a fact that if they come here, if they come here, here to my business, they're going to be in good hands. I know that factually. And because I know that factually and they don't know that, I have to do everything in my power to acquire their business so that I can take care of them and they can feel comfortable knowing that I'm going to support them in every way possible. So it's very, very important to embrace your rejection, right? Like fear is the most powerful thing on the planet. It's scary, but it's also the only, I say the one of the one and only things that can push you to greatness. Like you think Dr. King wasn't pushed to greatness? You think he wasn't feared? You think he wasn't afraid? You think Malcolm X wasn't afraid? You think Gandhi wasn't afraid? You think these people are afraid. They were afraid of rejection. They are afraid of change. They are afraid of failure. They was afraid of it succeeding. They're afraid of all of those things. But that fear did not keep them from moving forward with their mission, from having faith that who they say that they are, who God says that they are, who they claim to be, who they decide that they need to show up as, they, they know that that's who they are and that's real. I need everybody on this line that is starting a staffing business or that has a dream and that believes in that dream and that you know that this dream is going to come to life. I want you to put a one in that box. Put a one in the box. Say, I know it. You can put that in the box. Say, it's mine. You can put that in the box. Say, I claim it. You can put that in the box. I'm going to do this. You can put that in the box. I have faith. I want to see, I want to feel that energy from you all. Come on now, because you're here for a reason. You're here for a reason, a powerful reason. It's far beyond the money in your pocket. Far beyond the money in your pocket. You all have a special gift that other people on the planet don't have. The gift of entrepreneurship, it's not for the faint at heart. You have to be strong. You have to be smart. You have to be nimble, flexible, empathetic. You've got to be, you've got to have armor. You've got to have faith when nobody else has it. You've got to see things that nobody else sees and believe in them regardless of whether they believe it or not. That's scary. That's scary. You've got to see things and believe it, no matter whether somebody else believes it or not. And then you've got to encourage other people to believe what you see, even though they don't see it. That's leadership. These are the things that come with being an entrepreneur. This is that second version of yourself, that version you're leveling up to. This is about a level up here. This is about a level up. From employee to entrepreneur is a level up. So who are you? Who do you choose to be? I'll leave it there. Because I'll be on this call so fired up. Y'all going to have me on this thing like what? <laughs> Y'all got my chest over here hurt and I'm so fired up. Listen, it is not a game, honey buddy. It's not a game. It is not a game over here. That energy is real. That fire is real. And that's what it's going to take for you to get to the next level, for you to level up in your business. So when you come to class here, bring your fears. I'm going to stomp them mofos right on down, push them out the water and, 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 and bring you to faith. Because that's what this community is about. It's about us coming together in faith and achieving our dreams, not even just for us, but for the people that we're supporting, for the environment, for the community for our candidates, for our economic system. It's real, okay, it's real. And I love y'all, I love the conversation. I didn't even know we were going here today, but I love y'all and I love the conversation. And I want y'all to let that fear to fuel you. Every moment that you start feeling the pressure of the fear, I want you to look in the mirror and you say, I got this. I got this because I got God behind my back. I got this because D. Williams behind my back. I got this because I got the tools and the resources. I got this because I'm made for this. 
I got this because this wouldn't even be in my, my energy if it wasn't meant for me. Do you realize how many people have ideas and never do anything with them? It's in your energy and you're actually executing. That's God driven. That's divine. I can't tell you how many people pay me and never launch. How many people call me and say this is what they want to do and I never hear from them again. I will even, they will take me all the way down to the point of signing the contract and putting an invoice. I'll put an invoice and they still won't go forward with it. They still won't move forward with their dreams. They're still allowing fear to keep them from obtaining what is theirs from creating the impact, leaving the legacy that they're supposed to leave. Not, I'm not talking about legacy money. I'm talking about who are you when you leave here? It was only 10 years ago, just 10 years ago, that I was brought with the question, will you die or will you live? I was told I had three months to live. I, I, I sat back, I, what are you talking about, people? There's no way I'm about to die. Ma'am, you have three months. Call your family. You've got three months. That's as long as you, you're not going to make it past. You're not going to see January 20, 2014. That, those are the exact words out of my doctor's mouth. Plan your funeral, lady. I'm going to let you go home on bed rest, but you need to get your mom here, plan your funeral. So I had to go home. Like, wait, where did this come from? Okay, so if I'm gonna stay, who am I? Let's say I do stay. What does that mean? Am I the same person? Am I, when people, when I leave here, how are people gonna remember D. Williams? Are they gonna even remember me? Like, what good did I do on this planet? I was planning to be a boss since I was a kid. I could not do anything but think about it. I think, I thought about it. I dreamed about it. I talked about it. People ran away from me so much because all I wanted to do was be my own boss. I did not like seeing my mommy unhappy. So I wanted to be happy and I wanted her to be happy. So I wanted to be my own boss. And I am my own boss. I make lots of these. Every moment of the day, <laughs> these are coming into my account. Every moment of the day, like that. Yeah. yeah. How did you make that? Yes, I use my ideas. I turn my ideas and I make them real. I bring them to life. I thought they were just, just a million dollars. One hundred dollar. One hundred. <laughs> Any? You got a question for me? You are all, sweetheart. So I had to make decisions. I'm staying, but not only am I staying, I'm gonna leave a mark that has never been left before. Hi, my name is Mary Nat. I'm here at Atlanta Tech Village. I'm so excited to be with Dee Williams. She's here making a presentation about her new app that's gonna transform the way that we look at resumes from a two-dimensional view to a multi-dimensional digital view. It's gonna actually bring your resume alive. So we're excited to be here tonight. Our next speaker, there is, she's got her own crew here. Our, Bob wasn't good enough. We've got another crew here. So if everybody, where, where's, Dee, where's your cameraman? Right there. Hey, everybody, wait, wait. You, you can be in a documentary. Wave to the camera, please. Right Wave this to the camera. Is, don't get shy. Don't get shy. That's my side view. <laughs> so our next speaker. Uh, the, the Energizer Bunny is getting ready to come up here. When I, when I first spoke to Dean on the phone, um, God, it was like 9 o'clock at night, and I am a little bit tired. Talked to her for about 5, 10 minutes. I went to bed at 3.30. <laughs> I was so wound up and so excited about uh, talking to her. I mean, she's involved in multiple different businesses. She's got a podcast on, on staffing. Um, I, I'm not sure if and when she ever sleeps. I don't sleep. She doesn't sleep. Don't sleep at all. But it's, it's just amazing what she's got going, what's going on in her life, what she's overcome to get here tonight. Um, and after speaking with her, and after 
the energy that uh, that she displayed, I was like, okay, you've got to talk. You've got to talk. So I don't need to talk anymore. Dee, it's your turn. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna die trying. We recognize those people that have made a difference and made a commitment to other people, something bigger than themselves. So this year, we are going to recognize you as Unity Fest Woman of the Year. I made up my mind that day that it was gonna be a different version of myself, a version that lived, a version that was healthy. I didn't even accept what the doctor said. They told me I was dying, I was bleeding to death, which was true for them. And my body said that was true, but my heart, my mind, my soul, every part of my being said, nah, bro, I'm staying here. And not only am I staying here, I'm gonna impact so many lives. But then I want you to peel the layers back a little bit more with that. So you're gonna meet them. How are you gonna meet them? Are you gonna meet them one on one? Are you gonna have an event? I would like to have an event. Okay, so now we're peeling the, layer, the layers back. But we gotta peel it back a little bit more. What type of events? Well, like networking events for a weekend where we can speak with them about, you know, the things. Like, don't be afraid of them because a lot of them are so afraid of them, and you have to understand. I'm not saying all veterans are one way, or don't be afraid of PTSD and all of that stuff, or you know, things that go on in the world. Giving workplace. them awareness, yes, awareness, mm -hmm. awareness. So, awareness events, we'll flush those out a little bit more. Awareness events, keep going. What else can you do with your business? How can you support the veterans more? How can you support their Educated. hiring and educating? I'm gonna build my company out. I'm gonna hire the most amazing people. When I talk about, I'm talking about every other company has turnover, not mine. My people are gonna be amazing. They're gonna stick with me through thick and thin. We're gonna get rich together. We're gonna impact lives together. I'm gonna have the best team in the world and I'm gonna be the most amazing leader. Not only that, I'm gonna have the best clients. My clients are gonna be loving. Like all the friends I used to have in the past, they represent a different side of me. I don't even like them. They're not for me anymore. But the clients that I sign on, almost all of them are my friends. I try not to do it. It don't always work. Especially if I come out to you face to face. Then they end up becoming my friends. You know? But these are people that I genuinely want to engage with. These are people that are vibrating where I'm vibrating. These are people that are more like me. That are having the same type of struggles that I am. We're growing together in business and love. It's a different energy. got to make decisions about who you are as an entrepreneur. It's a different version. I'm going to leave y'all with that. It's a different version. It's not the same version. It's a different version. If you wake up in the morning and you are going to work, be that version of you that's going to work. But when you hit, when you take your lunch break, turn her off, turn him off, put on this other version, boss version for that one hour and then turn her back off and go back to your employee. And the moment you clock out, turn it off and you're in boss mode again. You understand? Because who you are on a daily basis, who you are is this next version of yourself. You're transitioning out of that person. But why you're transitioning out of this person, I want y'all to think about just a few things. I want you to think about, oh, I'm an employee. This is how my employee is about to feel. How do I feel? How do I want to be a better leader? How do I want to make my staffing agency better? Because you're an employer to your internal staff and to the external staff, to your contractors. So how, how do I become a better leader? How do I become a better employer than the one that is making me miserable? Than the, than the one that is not acknowledging me? Than the one that is, how do I become a better employer? How do I help my internal staff grow in their personal and professional lives? So while you're being an employee, pay attention because these are the things that you want to change in your organization. You now have the power to create an organization that stands firm in the standards and the rights that you believe employees should have better than the ones that you have. 
You get to do that because you're in this different version of yourself, owning the company, CEO, entrepreneur, do your thing. <laughs> it's very important. It's very important for you to find that other version of yourself and to tap in, live in it, even if she don't feel real, even if you don't feel real. If you're on this call, you're a salesperson and you want to make a million, two million, you can do that. Who are you? Are you the same salesperson that you were making 30,000 or 80,000? Or are you walking into another version of yourself where you have a much bigger vision, a much bigger vision? Your dream should be big. Your goals should be big. And you should be using your energy to get towards them in an easy way. And I think sometimes in a hard way too. You know, I love y'all so much. I'm going to read some of the comments and then we're going to go because it's an hour and I only have an hour before my next meeting. Mary says, I think D is saying, put your big girl panties on and move. I'm saying that life is going to be life. Life is going to life. Life be life in. That's what I'm saying. And and that now that we know that, now it's time to move to the next level. So now that we know life is lifing and life is going to be lifing, what else is there? An entrepreneur is a risk taker. An entrepreneur receives the fear, receives the failure, receives the rejection, receives the change. I didn't say they take it and love it. I said they receive it. That means they know how to receive it, they handle it, psh, they spit it back out and become 10 times better. Every time you have a loss, you've got to remember that that loss is setting you up for your next success. We just had a loss. We're about to have a big success. Soon as that loss happens, it's, it's, again, Stephen was in my ear reminding me, you all remember, you already know, if you at your bottom, baby, you already know what's about to happen. I was like, you're right. So like, you're about to get that win. I'm like, you're right. What am I thinking? It's a different thought process because the employee side of me would be broken down, crying, drinking, smoking, doing whatever I can to, to self-sabotage myself because I can't handle what's happening. But the entrepreneur boss side of me is like, oh, I'm, I'm on that failure. <laughs> I'm on that rejection. Okay, about to level up. Let me get my armor ready. You about to level up. Let's see how it's going. Let me make sure my dream intact. Let me make sure I can still see the vision. Let me make sure my team is still feeling the vision. Because just because we, we take an L, that don't mean we're not going to take a W. We're about to take 50 Ws for that one L. It's about to be fire. You understand? Y'all just got me so fired up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and look. Y'all got me over here fire. Okay, I'm just D, get your stuff together. <laughs> Get yourself together. He said, I'm dedicated to change and development of all my resources and personal and professional. Ariel said, I'm definitely walking in faith and I don't have any other option than to succeed. I'm scared to death of the process, but I'm going to keep going. That's what I'm talking about. You've got to keep going through that fear. Girl, you preaching right now for a non-church goer. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I know factually. Y'all got to remember, I was an 11 year old mom. I started this journey out. I was raped at eight years old. Ran away every year afterwards. <laughs> okay. Pregnant at 11. Baby at 12. Baby at 15. Moved into my first apartment at 15. Everything in my life has been hard. Nothing has been easy. Nothing. Everything has been a walk of faith. It's been, it's you either resilient or you die. You resilient or you hungry. You resilient or you poor. You resilient or you stay the same. Faith is the only thing that pushes you, that keeps you, that takes you to your dreams. And without it, period, period. Period. You are your only competition. Yes. Lifting a car is an instinct. Don't think, just do it. Exactly. Lift that car. Y'all already know it. I encourage you to create goals and have small victories in your business. This will grow your faith. I agree. 
Those sound like blessings as you cannot have awesome without a few bumps and bruises. Cannot succeed without it. It is the worst kind of pain. However, when you get through it, there is no prouder moment in business and life. That is facts. You feel me? If you really want it, the war will never end. But to the winner of wars, go to the spoils and generational wealth we all want and need. Only way to get better is to challenge a stronger opponent. And your strongest opponent will always be you be you and you will not win every battle against yourself now that's an anime thing too because that's the luffy always fights somebody stronger than him and then he gets stronger so the bigger the bigger your battles now that you got them under your belt when that battle comes back up again you're going to win that battle because you've already experienced it once before now it's like mm, i already been there done that you just got to get through it that one time so i love that you're going to make it. You're great. I love that. I'm still working my job. I eat, sleep, and breathe this business so I can quit my job one day. You will. You definitely will. I'm grateful for the opportunity, all the things I've learned. I love that. I see it's mine. I claim it. Ah, I'm claiming it. I'm claiming it. I'm claiming it. I will do this and be successful. I have faith, affirm, and accept it. I love it. Mary said, you are above and not below. You are above and not believe. You are the head and not the tail. Above and not below. You are the head and not the tail. That's right, Mary. Do you have a recruiter training course? We used to have a rookie recruiter training course, but it's old and outdated. So I'm about to do another one. It's old and outdated. Things have changed post-COVID. Mary said, I will also encourage you to write an affirmation or remember a scripture, speak it every day. So when fear sets in, speak speak but in but it in, in the atmosphere speak it in the atmosphere you're gonna be great i'm done mary is on fire today too she me and her both fired up right here i'm trying to tell you <laughs> latoya, latoya said thank you so much for sharing with i love y'all listen we'll be back next monday let's get fired up i want y'all to be fired up about your business everything's gonna work out everything's gonna be okay this is the journey if this was easy, everybody would have a staffing business. Everybody would do it. Listen, even the people who came up during COVID, a lot of them are quitting because they don't understand what it takes to be an entrepreneur. They only wanted to be in the business when it was easy for them. They can't sustain their dream and their vision. You all are coming in at the right time because you understand you're coming in when the market is real, not when it's fake. Okay, so now it's time for you to go out there, rock it out in your business. I want y'all to have an amazing week. The replay will be in Restillify. Let's rock it out, staffingpreneurs. Ah!